first thing you'll need to do, unless of course you already own it, is to download Construct2. So you'll need to go to Scara.com and then Store, Free Edition, and down, download the file. Then install it, and you're also going to need a plugin called Sprite Font for Construct2. And I will be providing all of these links you'll need in the video description. So download SpriteFont.zip, unzip it, and you're going to need to put it into Construct2 Exporters HTML5 Plugins. Once Construct2 and the Sprite Font plugin are ready to go, you're going to need the actual game engine I created. And you'll be able to download that from the link I provide in the uh, video description. And um, once you download and unzip the game file and double click it, it should open up Construct2 automatically. Which should look something like this. If the uh, start page is open, you can go ahead and close that by clicking here. And then you're going to see um, something like this. And this is the general Construct2 interface. Over here, you're going to see a projects tab. And this is important to navigate around the different parts of the game engine. Uh, layouts are basically each different screen. A screen can be a level or a menu screen or something like that. So by double-clicking on any of these in the layouts list, um, you can go to that particular part of the game. You should see a tab to open up the layers palette here. And um, if you've ever used a program like GIMP or Photoshop, you know in general how layers work. Um, basically for a game level this might be layers of scrolling. Um, in this case I have the sort of white mask out area that creates the fade in and fade out for uh, any screen on this top layer and then we have a middle layer that I named stuff in this case and then we have a backmost layer with the scrolling cloud pattern. Um, so you can hide and show layers and more importantly you can lock layers so you don't accidentally click move or uh, or change or select something that you don't mean to be at the time. So um, here's how you can change artwork. Let's say you wanted to change the title. You wanted to replace this placeholder graphic uh, of this uh, game logo with your own. Okay, you can double click on it and that will pull up uh, several little windows here. We have the animation frames in case uh, there's multiple frames. In this case there is. This object is used uh, in two parts of the game for different things. This first frame is used for the title and the second frame is in the, used in the You Win screen. Um, and then you have the actual uh, area to edit things like the image itself and hotspot. There's no actual graphic editing here. You're going to want to create your art somewhere else, like in a, in a graphic program like ProMotion or GIMP or Photoshop. Uh, and then um, you load it in with this button here. Um, so you would just click on this little folder and then direct it toward the image you want to load in. And let's say, for instance, you for some reason wanted the title of the game to just be the letter E. Uh, and then you might want to adjust the hotspot, uh, which is called an image point in Construct2. And you just click to put that where you want it, and then close when you're done. And as you can see now, the game is called E. Okay, but let's say you want to uh, replace something that's animated. Let's say you want to replace um, one animation with an animation that you've created. So I'm going to go to an actual level um, and hide the HUD layer that also has that big white sort of mask for fades. Um, and then I'm going to lock these back layers um, because I don't want to select anything from there. And I want to be on the foreground layer and let's say, for example, um, let's say I want to turn this, change this enemy so that instead of flying, so you can see these are his flying animation frames. Um, let's say I want him to be a shiny gem, since that's what I have available right now. It's convenient for me. I'm going to uh, right click and I, I deleted all frames but one with the delete key, and then I can right click and choose import frames 
and now I can select sequential images and I think somewhere in here I have there we go a big red shiny gem so I can just use the shift key uh, so I click the first image I hold shift I click this the last image and I choose open and as you can see it loads in all of those images uh, sequentially and it's important uh, if you create your animation frames in an art program that they are all positioned exactly the same within the size of the entire image what would be called canvas size in Photoshop uh, you want to make sure they're all positioned exactly the same as one another so when you load them in and place your hotspot so let's say or image point it's called in construct 2 again um, Let's say I want something like this down there, what would be the feet of this creature if it were still a creature. Um, so I click down there, and then I right click on it in this image points box, and I choose apply to whole animation. So now that image point is the same across all, so we're not going to get any weird wiggling or, or sort of jumping around uh, of the character between all of the frames. Um, and for animations you create, you might need to tweak the actual speed of the animation. So this animation is called Respawn, and the animation we changed into this gem is called Default. And it, you'll notice if I click here, it's changing over here. This is the properties of that particular animation, Animation Default. So you can adjust the speed, whether or not it loops, or if it just stops at the last frame. Uh, and if it does loop, what frame it starts repeating to and then uh, how many times it repeats and then whether or not it's ping pong which would be going forward and then backward and then forward and backward so not only you have not only do you have those really nice options to control uh, your animation but what's really cool is if you click on a specific frame this right here this frame speed is the duration of that particular frame relative to the timing of the entire animation so if you want that animation to apply to that frame of the animation to only show for half the time of any of the other frames, you could literally just change that to 0 0.5. Or if you want it to take twice as long, you can change it to 2. And so now you'll see when I run this frame, the enemies now look like shiny crystals until you stomp on them. And you can also import uh, what are called animation strip images or sprite, uh, sprite strips or sprite sheets. And uh, to do that, you would uh, go back into this to edit uh, animation frames, delete all your unnecessary frames, import sprite strip, and then let's say we want to make him into a pixel art walking little robot character because that's what I have available. Uh, number of horizontal cells, eight vertical cells, one. So you just tell it how many, basically how your uh, sprite sheet is divided. Click OK, and it'll automatically cut them out so long as the sprite strip is uh, arranged appropriately with each frame taking the same space and, and being placed appropriately. Uh, and then again, you're going to probably want to do something like that for the hotspot. Um, and then right click, quick assign, oh, I'm sorry, apply to whole animation. Uh, and there's something I haven't mentioned yet, which is really important for any kind of uh, game sprite that is going to be interacted with, and that is the collision mask. By default, when you load an image, you might end up with something like this, where it's just making a rectangle around the entire um, image size. and most of the time for a game you want to have something more like this and the nice thing is you don't have to do this for every frame so once you've clicked here to edit your collision polygon you can actually right click within the polygon itself and also choose apply to whole animation and now you'll see that that collision box is in the same place for all animations and when we go back to the image points the image point is also the same in all animations uh, sorry, all frames of the animation. Okay, so now I'm going to run this layout. Instead of those flying enemies being gems, oops, I need to refresh. Uh, that's another important thing to keep in mind when you're running the frame. If your art is not updated, just refresh your browser. It's just not, uh, it's, it's 
running the game that is in your buffer instead of loading the latest version of the game. So you'll see, now the enemies are your walking robot animation that was loaded in from a strip. Uh, so the collision, uh, dis uh, defining your collision areas aren't only important for enemies and things like that, it's going to be really important when you change the environment art, these tiles here. So let me uh, go back here and zoom back in. And I'll, uh, let's see, fork on this unlocked so I can choose a tile. And if I double click, it opens up the editor. So let's say I change this image. When I load in a new image, this is probably not going to be set properly anymore. So you need to be consistent. If all of your tiles are collidable here, all the way at the top, you need to make sure they're all aligned pro properly like this. In my case, I want the uh, player character and enemies to be partially inside the tile so their feet land here on the ground instead of up on top here. Uh, so just be careful when you're editing um, environment art uh, to make sure the collisions are correct because if some of your tiles have it up here and some, of, some have it down here, when you put the tiles side by side, the uh, character is going to stop. He's going to hit this this edge here uh, on one tile because he's walking low on one tile, and then the the whole uh, the entire uh, of another tile, the entirety of another tile, is collidable, and that's going to cause issues. So just make sure you're consistent um, with where the collisions are for a tile, and make sure you edit that every time you load in new art for a tile. Uh, another trick about the tiles that's really important to keep in mind is it's based on a 32 by 32 pixel uh, grid and to use grids if you want to move tiles around or rearrange a level you go into view and you choose snap to grid and you set that to 32 by 32 like so and now when I move a tile around it makes sure it puts it in the right place but um, because this game engine uses hardware acceleration. Um, it uses uh, filtering and it can zoom in and out. And because of that, you can get these annoying gray seams in between your tiles. So to correct for that, the trick I used is to make the tiles actually 33 by 33 pixel instead of 32 by 32 uh, with the action point or image point, I should say at the very top left. So basically they overlap, the tiles overlap by one pixel on the on the right side and the bottom. Uh, it's just something to get used to, but it, it basically it ensures no matter what happens in your browser, no matter how the game gets scaled, you don't see any nasty gray, uh, gray seams in between all of your tiles. Okay, so that's the basics for changing artwork with uh, existing objects. But the really cool thing about this game engine is you're free to not only delete things where you don't want them, or add things or move things around. Uh, I should let you know. Uh, when you're editing a level and you want to add another tile, you can simply choose a tile that's already there. Make sure you have the right layer selected. And then hold control. And now when you drag, and remember I have snap to grid on, when you drag it, it'll just make a copy of what you've dragged instead of moving it. Uh, so you can place them wherever you want to. So that's how you can add more tiles very easily to change a level around. The same thing works with enemies or something like that. If I want an enemy somewhere else, I can just hold control, click and drag, and put the, uh, the new enemy copy wherever I need to. Uh, so that's how you do that. But what I'm talking about is uh, adding new objects to your game. And uh, you just decide what layer you want to add your object on. And there are two ways. The easiest way um, is to double click. And remember, I have these two layers locked, so it's going to be um, more foolproof for me. I'm not going to accidentally click and select things I don't want. So whichever layer you're on, if you click where there's no object, quickly, if you double click with the left mouse button, it'll bring up the Insert New Object menu. And then you would choose Sprite most of the time. And then when you click, 
it's going to bring up the, uh, the sprite animation editing windows and then you can load anything you want to and um, I haven't pre-planned this so now I have to quickly find some kind of image to load in so let's say let's say for some reason uh, okay effects that'll be a little less distracting let's say that this is some kind of weird plant or something that is animated for example and I want in the it's, it's quite high res sorry about that but you can also scale like this if you want to but it's going to keep that whole giant image in memory so obviously it's best to make your actual images the resolution you want in the game but just as an example uh, I've imported my new object it could be an animated flower or whatever and you just want it to be a prop in the background so uh, let's say I want it there but obviously the problem is if I want it on this layer with the characters and stuff by default, when you insert a new object, it's on top of everything else. But if you right-click on it and choose Z order, you can send it to the bottom of the layer. And for some reason, sometimes it takes twice to make it happen. But as you can see now, it's behind uh, everything else. Okay. I'm grabbing other stuff accidentally, but there. You can see it's now behind everything else on that layer. And I'm going to run the layout again. And I'm probably going to have to refresh it. When I refresh it, hopefully we'll see that object. There it is. So you're completely free to add as many animated or, or static objects as you want to any of the layers, anywhere you want to really pretty up the, the game. And that's the basics for uh, bringing in your own artwork and uh, customizing and prettying up the game. Uh, one more important thing to keep in mind with uh, tiles, when you create your own tile set, uh, I've only created very, very few tiles. So you're probably going to want a lot more variety. So when you're creating uh, additional tiles, what you're going to want to make sure you do is not only make sure the collision polygon is set properly for each tile, but the most important thing, and... Um, let me show you what I mean. I just made this a little wider so we can read it more easily. If uh, if you go here on any sprite, if you select it and you look in its properties under behaviors, by default there's none. And you would need to click add or edit, click on the plus, and choose solid. Which is, oh, it's not here. It's not visible. It would be here at the top, uh, but it's not here because it's already there. So I'm going to cancel that. But you, basically for a platform, you have two options, jump through and solid. Most of the time you want solid, but if you want to add platforms to the game where the character can jump up through them, and then as he's falling, he'll land on them, then uh, jump through is the one you want. So obviously that's going to be really important. If you add in new tiles that look nice, even though your collision is set properly, if you do not give them a behavior as solid or jump through, then your player and the enemies are going to fall right through it and that's not going to be a very fun game to play. So that's the basics for bringing in your own art as I said. Uh, that's all the really important things. If you run into, if your game starts playing in a bizarre manner, um, keep in mind the two things. Do you have it set to solid or jump through if you're supposed to be able to collide with it and land on it and walk on it? And otherwise, the uh, collision polygons is another very likely cause of issues in the game. Uh, make sure, for instance, when you're changing uh, art for enemies and things of that sort, before you change the art, take a close look at how I set up the collision rectangles relative to the image art and um, the, uh, the image points. Where are they relative to the image art? And you should try to duplicate the general idea of uh, where I placed those two things because that can have a pretty big in impact on uh, on what how the game runs, on what it's doing when the game runs. Um, the next series of videos I'll be making will explain how to actually change gameplay elements in, in Construct2 in this game engine. Uh, if you look here, 
these layouts are the different, uh, basically the different screens for the game, like menu screens and levels, as I said before. But under them, you'll see event sheets, and event sheets are the actual what's called events. It's basically the lines of code that affect what's actually happening in the game. And the next series of videos I make are actually um, going to explain how to add very uh, typical uh, aspects to the game that are very common to platformers, like a double jump and uh, perhaps a wall jump and stuff like that. But in the meantime, if you want to start to learn more about Construct2 and how to start to program your own games from scratch and uh, just get a better feeling for it, be sure to go to skira.com and check out the tutorial section. Uh, and I'll also provide a link in the video description uh, where you can find some really good video tutorials that are uh, really easy to sort of dive in and, and uh, start to learn Construct2. And one last thing I just thought of were uh, all of you hardcore pixel artists out there that do not want their game uh, scaled and filtered, uh, that want to actually show off uh, every last pixel they've placed in their artwork, uh, you can actually set Construct2 to, uh, to display the game in that fashion. So uh, you can make all of your art as actual non-anti-aliased um, pixel art, uh, and, and import it in, and once your game is, is all loaded into Construct, once all of your art is in Construct 2, I should say, then what you need to do is go into the main folder here for the project, and that'll bring up these properties here. And you want to make sure that pixel rounding is turned on. That'll make sure that nothing is ever placed in a, sort of half a pixel placement, which will cause filtering. And then the other important thing is to go to full screen in browser mode and turn it off. And once you do those two things, when, and oh, sorry, also make sure sampling is turned to point um, instead of linear. And basically that's going to turn off scaling and it's going to turn off um, filtering as much as possible. Um, so now when I run the game, and I'm going to have to refresh it most likely, yes. But now you'll see the game runs in an actual letterbox, and uh, the scrolling is less smooth and stuff like that because it's not filtering and, and actually scrolling in partial pixel placements. Um, but it's actual pixel art. And so now when you load the game, you can see it's nice and crisp, and it's showing the actual pixels that the artist has created. And that's it. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you have a lot of fun with this, and um, as soon as I get a chance, I'll make more videos.